I can long time ago, the Edoe of Japan. Looking at Tokus face, it is said to bring happiness. この服の顔を見ませれば、見た方は幸せになる、不老長寿になる、ご良縁に恵まれ、子宝に恵まれ、商売ますます繁盛すると言われております。本年は、北海道マサチューセッツ州姉妹提携30周年。そして、ジャパンフィルムフェスティバルインボストンも行われました。どうぞ皆々様方お楽しみいただきますよう隅から隅までずずずいと恋願いあげたてまつりまする私はヤシオです。日本祭りへようこそ。今年日本祭りは9回目を迎えます。このパンデミックの影響で新しいチャレンジ、バーチャルでの開催となりました。そして北海道とマサチューセッツ州、姉妹州30周年記念のお祝いの会でもあります。この祭りは日本文化を伝え合うプラットフォーム作りを目指しています。そこで「知らない」を絆に変え支え合う場所となればと思っています。私たち日本祭りのコミッティはこのような思いで祭りを開催しています。コミッティメンバー全員がボランティアで参加しこの企画に賛同する多くの皆様企業団体の方々その方々の寄付によって成り立っています。たくさんの方に応援され、今年も開催できることを幸せに思っています。どうぞ皆さん、最後までこの日本祭りをお楽しみください。そして、日本を身近に感じていただければ幸いです。ありがとうございました。
帰国か何から始めるかなまずは黒猫ヤマトにお問い合わせください全米各地の直営店から日本のご自宅まで一貫輸送任せて安心黒猫ヤマトの海外引っ越し
Hi there. I'm Etsuko Yoshio. I'm president of Japan Festival Boston. Konnichiwa. Hey there, I'm Julian. Hey there. My name is Philip or Philip. Hello. My name is Mio. Hi, my name is Mina. My name is Carter. Hello, I'm Samu. Hi, I'm Kevin. My name is Yuka. Hey there, my name is Ara. My name is Miho. My name is Kyoko Morita. I am Oyana. My name is Mayumi. My name is Yasu. My name is Ikue. Hot summer nights, sipping beer and feeling right. I am president of Massachusetts Hokkaido Association. We're the PR team. I do the video editing. I'm in charge of marketing and design. I am the social media editor. I'm president of Japan Festival Boston. I'm vice president and brand manager. We are brand team. I'm Japan Festival Boston committee's treasurer. I'm a stage director. We, we are the, the MC team. team. I'm on the cosplay team. I'm on the food team. I'm on the strategy team. I'm from Tokyo. I'm from Boston. I'm from Cambridge, Massachusetts. I am originally from Hokkaido. I'm from Hokkaido, Japan. I'm from Osaka, Japan. I grew up in Russia, lived in Japan, and now I live in the US. I am from the island of Guam. I'm from Nagoya. I'm from Chiba, Japan. I'm from Hong Kong, and I grew up in Tokyo, Japan. I'm from Okayama City. Welcome to Japan Festival Boston. Please enjoy Japan Festival. We are celebrating the 30th year since Massachusetts and Hokkaido became sister states. Please enjoy our stage. Welcome to the first virtual Japan Festival Boston. I hope you enjoy this year's festival. And we hope we can see you next year. Thank you for watching. Bye! Welcome to Japan Festival Boston. My name is Philip and I'll be your host. Last year was our eighth annual festival. It drew 70,000 people to the Boston Common. This year marks our ninth year and our first year as a virtual festival. We had a huge amount of community collaboration in order to produce content for this year's festival. As a festival attendee, you will have a chance to win an assortment of gift cards and tickets to our community businesses around Boston. So please, make sure you'll be in Boston before you sign up. You can go to the description down below, find the link to the entry form, or you can visit our website. That's japanfestivalboston.org. You can also participate in the silent auction. You'll find the link in the description. And finally, featured auction items include airline tickets to Japan provided by JAL, and hotel stays provided by the Imperial Hotel and Tokyo Hotels. After my co-host explains in Japanese, we'll take a look at what the experiences will be like. Boston Nihon Matsuri へようこそ。本日 MC を務めさせていただくイクエです。昨年8年目には開催地であるボストンコモンへ2日間で7万人もの来場があったこのボストン日本祭り。9年目を迎えた今年は初のバーチャルでの開催となりました。今年もたくさんのコンテンツを準備していますよ。そして皆様には豪華な抽選会とサイレントオークションにもご参加いただきます抽選ではボストン周辺のビジネスへのギフト券などを用意していますのでボストンへ立ち寄れる方のみエントリーをお願いします抽選会には概要リンクか JapanFestivalBoston.org のホームページのリンクからフォームに記入をそしてサイレントオークションには概要リンクからサイトへアクセスしてください JAL さんの航空券や日本の帝国ホテルさん、東急ホテルさんの宿泊券もありますので、ぜひ雰囲気だけでもチェックしてみてくださいね。
バイト感で働くことができて本当に光栄に思っております素晴らしい時代だったわけですよねバイト感っていうのはそれがいまだに継続されて本館ありタワー館がありという時代を迎えることができたのかなと。テラコットと壁画とスタンドとはライトのデザインは当時のもので残してありますお泊まりにいただいているお客様も何かいい意味で皆さんこう感じていただければ本当に光栄に思っております Fantastic! This year, Massachusetts and Hokkaido celebrate the 30th anniversary of being sister states. This connection encompasses a number of relationships between individual towns as well. To mark the occasion, I'd like to read a letter that we received from the governor of Hokkaido. Dear Boston Japan Festival, I wish you all the best regarding this year's Japan Festival Boston. Due to the impacts of the novel coronavirus, this year's festival. Will be celebrated virtually. I'd like to express my sincere respect to the team to make this year's festival a reality. About 150 years ago, thanks to the efforts made by those with deep connections to Massachusetts, such as Horace Kevron and William S. Clark, we were able to establish our relationship from Hokkaido, which has our historical development. This year, marking the 30th anniversary of the Hokkaido Massachusetts sister statehood. I'd like to continue to build upon our friendship, our various collaborations on our economies, culture, education, and beyond. I wish that everyone will get to renew their appreciation of our alliance through Japan Festival Boston this year. And once the effects of the novel coronavirus have ceased, that you have a chance to visit Hokkaido. I wish all the best to the success of the new Japan Festival Boston. The 2020 Hokkaido Governor, Naomichi Suzuki. Now, in the next segment, we'll hear a message from Keiko Oro. She's the executive director of 
the Massachusetts Office of Travel and Tourism. After that, you'll learn more about three cities and towns in Hokkaido. This includes Sapporo, the capital city, Takikawa, the sister city of Springfield, Mass, and Nanae, the sister town of Concord, Mass. さて、今年は北海道とマサチューセッツ州の姉妹提携が30周年を迎えた記念の年です。双方の町同士でも友好関係を築いています。本日は北海道知事からお手紙をいただいておりますので、読み上げさせていただきます。この度のボストン日本祭りの開催を心よりお祝い申し上げます。今年のボストン日本祭りは、新型コロナウイルス感染症の影響を考慮され、バーチャル方式での開催となりました関係者の皆様には開催実現にご尽力をいただき心から敬意を表します約150年前ホーレス・ケプロン氏やウィリアム・エス・クラーク氏などマサチューセッツ州にゆかりのある方々のご貢献により北海道の礎が築かれたことでその後目覚ましい発展を遂げることができました本年マサチューセッツ州と北海道との姉妹提携30周年を迎えこの記念すべき節目を契機としてマサチューセッツ州との友好関係を大切にしながら経済や文化教育をはじめとしたさまざまな交流をさらに進めてまいります皆様にはボス,トンボストン日本祭りを通じて北海道との絆を一層確かなものとされ新型コロナウイルス感染症が収束した際にはぜひご来堂いただきたいと願っております。最後に、新たなボストン日本祭りの成功を心よりお祝い申し上げます。2020年12月、北海道知事、鈴木直道。そして、マサチューセッツ観光局のケイコーラルさんからの挨拶もございます。北海道の3つの場所、北海道の中心地札幌市、スプリングフィールドと姉妹提携を結ぶ滝川市、そしてコンコードと姉妹提携を結ぶ七重町について動画でご紹介いたします。
Hello and welcome to Japan Festival Boston 2020. My name is Keiko Matsuda Oral and I'm the Executive Director of the Massachusetts Office of Travel and Tourism. On behalf of our Governor Charlie Baker and Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito, we want to congratulate you on this wonderful virtual event. Although we wish we could be together in person, we're honored to be with you virtually and are excited about the program that's ahead. Each year, a lot of planning and organizing goes into the Japan Festival. And this year, it took enormous effort and planning and creativity and ingenuity to make this virtual event happen. I want to thank the organizers of this event, Etsuko Yashiro and Miho Owens, for taking the time and effort and persistence to make this event happen. Things may look different, but it promises to be as interesting and as exciting as ever. 30 years ago, the Commonwealth entered into a friendship with Hokkaido, Japan. And to this year, we celebrate that anniversary. A few people had the vision to see that we not only have great things in common to treasure, but we have great opportunities ahead as we form relationships across the globe. We've had wonderful memories throughout the years. And the beauty of a 30-year-old relationship is that you know that it will continue. We've survived through good times and bad and we haven't given up on each other. We look forward to the next 30 years and beyond. My grandparents came from Okinawa to Hawaii, and longevity is one of the hallmarks of Okinawans. My favorite uncle just passed last year at the age of 100, and one of the greatest things that uncle taught me was to keep pressing on, keep working hard, and to not give up. Thank you again for this wonderful opportunity to be with you. I hope you will stay strong, Keep working hard and not give up. I wish you good health and happiness for the remainder of this year and into 2021. This year has been like none other, and we've had the opportunity to create memories that none of us will forget. We hope that one day soon, we'll be back together on the Boston Common enjoying yakisoba and karaage with friends and family. But until then, we wish you a very happy 
Japan Festival. Enjoy! As part of this year's festival, we are celebrating the 30th year of the Massachusetts Hokkaido sister state relationship. In 1876, a few Massachusetts teachers were hired by the Japanese government and sent to assist in the development of the northern island of Hokkaido, then called Ezochi. William Clark and William Wheeler, among others, were sent to establish Sapporo Agricultural School, now Hokkaido University. There, they taught young students English and other fields, including agriculture, mining, and railroad construction, just to name a few. Even today, this wonderful tradition of Japan inviting teachers from America continues. I am most pleased that three Japan exchange teachers, two from Massachusetts, will introduce you to two sister cities, Takikawa and Nanae, as well as Sapporo, the capital city of Hokkaido. I hope they will inspire you to visit our sister state, Hokkaido. Congratulations on the commencement of the Boston Japan Festival. My name is Marlena, and I'm an American working in the International Affairs Office for the Hokkaido government. Right now, I'm in the main street of Hokkaido University. This is one of the many streets in Sapporo that will be used as part of the course for next year's Olympic Marathon. The street is lined with various buildings, from museums to research facility centers. Near Main Street is the bust of Professor William S. Clark. Clark was contracted from Massachusetts Agricultural College and as president helped to establish the Hokkaido University in 1876 under its original name of Sapporo Agricultural College. Clark's departing words, boys, be ambitious, were evocative of the frontier spirit that same frontier spirit that people who have a connection to Hokkaido have inherited even now. This is the former Hokkaido government building called Akarenga in Japanese, which translates to red brick building. It served as a central base in Hokkaido for 80 years, from its establishment in 1888 until the construction of the new office building. Now it is designated as an important national cultural asset. It is made of red bricks, and many of the building materials are from Hokkaido. It is fashioned in the American neo-baroque architectural style. The octagonal dome that you can see up top was designed by Mr. Horace Capron, who was born in Massachusetts and was a designated advisor to the Hokkaido Development Commission by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Many people related to Massachusetts brought the most advanced expertise and technology of their time to Hokkaido. Without their tremendous efforts, the development into Hokkaido of today would never have been possible. Once COVID-19 calms down, we look forward to welcoming you to Hokkaido. Next, let's head to Takikawa City, sister city to Springfield, Massachusetts, and learn about some famous spots there. Hi, everyone. My name is Ryan Love, and I'm a coordinator for international relations in Takikawa City in Hokkaido. I'm originally from Massachusetts, and I moved here from Boston in 2017. Takikawa is a city of about 40,000 in central western Hokkaido, about an hour north of Sapporo by train. In celebration of Massachusetts and Hokkaido's 30 years of sister statehood, I'd like to share some of our exchange activities and our city's main attractions with you. This year marks not only our 30th anniversary as sister states, but also the 30th anniversary of the Takikawa International Exchange Association, or TIEA. Our office in City Hall and the TIEA have worked on exchange programs with countries all over the world. 
Right now, our most active exchanges are with Mongolia, Singapore, Mozambique, many countries in Francophone Africa, and of course with Massachusetts. Takikawa and Springfield became sister cities in 1993. In addition, Takikawa West High School began an exchange program with nearby Longmeadow High School in 2006, and they became sister schools in 2015. Every year, we send a group of students to Springfield and Longmeadow on our Junior Ambassadors Delegation Program, during which they spend about a week immersed in American culture and society. They live with host families, attend school with their host siblings, and share their culture with the local community. Unfortunately, we couldn't visit this year, but we hope that this program can resume again as soon as possible. Takikawa has a lot of delicious local food to offer, but the dish that defines Takikawa has to be marinated Jingiskan. Jingiskan is a Hokkaido dish of grilled lamb and mutton, but there are two ways to eat it. Grilled and then dipped in sauce, or pre-marinated, and Takikawa is the birthplace of the marinated style. The meat is soaked in a marinade made from apples, onions, soy sauce, and other secret ingredients, and cooked in a special convex pot with a surrounding trench. As the meat cooks, the sauce flows into the trench where you can stew vegetables, noodles, and other foods. It all comes together for a delicious and savory feast. Takikawa's long and snowy winters are a lot like Massachusetts's, and they provide a stunning backdrop for the Paper Bag Lantern Festival, one of our city's biggest events. Residents and tourists cut out and trace designs on colorful paper bags to decorate the town. You can see them in store windows and community centers throughout the winter, but on the night of the festival, the snowy streets come to life in the glow of over 10,000 of these lanterns. Once the snow melts, if you look up in the sky, you can see glider planes floating all over the city. They all come from Takikawa Sky Park, home to a licensing school for gliders. You can actually ride along in a two-seater for a spectacular view of the whole city and the surrounding mountains and fields. But if you'd rather stay on the ground, you can still enjoy close-up views of the takeoffs and landings as you stroll along the grassy riverbed. Our biggest attraction is the famous canola flower fields that bloom in mid to late May. Every year, about 100,000 tourists from both Japan and from overseas come to see the golden yellow flowers spreading out across the land. During the peak blooming period, we hold a big festival that includes food stalls selling local creations as well as live music performances. The area with the best fields is called Ebeotsu, which was an independent town that was incorporated into Takikawa in 1971. In early October, while I'm shooting this, Bay Staters will recognize a familiar sight in Ebeotsu, bright red apples ready for picking. Here you can see two red varieties called Himekami and Benishogu. Both are similar to Fuji apples and are nice and sweet. You can also find Japan's most cultivated green apple called Orin, and a pale yellow variety with red tinge called Gunma Megetsu, both of which share Golden Delicious as a common ancestor. Finally, there's a site I want to show you that's unique to autumn in Takikawa. If you head up to the Maruka Highlands in the northeast on a cool, calm morning, you might be able to catch the Sea of Clouds, or Unkai in Japanese. If conditions are just right, mist can form over the Sorachi River or the Ishikari River, and it wafts over the low, rolling hills. We hope you will make the trip to Takikawa once this pandemic is over. When that day comes, we look forward to welcoming you. Thank you for watching. Next up, we will learn about Concord's sister town of Nanae. This is the town of Nanai. Located in southeastern Hokkaido, Nanai has a similar climate to Boston, Massachusetts, and is located on the 42nd parallel north line, the same latitude line as its sister city, Concord, Massachusetts. Nanai is known for its beautiful scenery and is home to Onoma National Park, Akamatsu the Red Pine Street, and Shirotai Ranch. In Onoma National Park, you can see landmarks like Mount Komogatake, which is an active volcano. Many tourists visit Onoma every year to hike, eat delicious food, and enjoy nature. One of Nanai's main industries is agriculture, 
and the town has many farms. Nanai is well known for its apples, rice, carrots, green onions, flowers, and dairy products. Nanai is also known for its sister city relationship with my hometown, Concord, Massachusetts. My name is Sarah Tan and I am the Coordinator of International Relations at Nanai Town Office. I have lived in Nanai for two years, working with delegations that travel from Nanai to America. Nanai's sister city relationship with Concord, Massachusetts began in 1997. Every year, Nanai sends delegations of students and Nanai citizens to Concord, Massachusetts. In total, Nanai has sent 25 delegations. This is Concord Street. It runs next to Nanai Town Office. Concord Street was established in 2017 for the 20th anniversary of the sister city relationship. The weather vane was a gift from Concord and on the top is a Minuteman. Nanai High School and Concord Carlisle High School have a special sister school relationship. The Concord Carlisle Concert Band has visited Nanai five times and performed in joint sister city concerts. In the 2019 concert, Concord commissioned a special piece to celebrate the sister city relationship called the 42nd North Parallel March, which Concord and Nanai students performed together. The Concord Carlisle Science Fiction Club visits Nanai every two or three years and builds lasting relationships and friendships. Nanai is a beautiful and exciting town. We hope you come and visit. Ooh, the Genghis Khan hot pot looks delicious. Now sharing a hot pot with friends is a great way to spend time together. Apart from the sister state and sister city relationships, young people collaborate through music and arts while on opposite sides of the globe. Japanese jazz trumpeter Tiger Okoshi has put together a video for us showing the collaboration. Please have a look. さて、
Now next up, we'll check out a collaboration between Takikawa High School and Brookline High School, featuring a dance of the traditional Yosakoi Odori. In the heyday of herring fishing in the 1800s and early 1900s, port towns on the Japan sea coast of Hokkaido, such as Otaru and Mashike, flourished. Abundant fish shone silver and filled the fishing nets. Men pulled the nets onto their ships with all their strength, hard work in the cold wintry weather. This is how the Yosakoi Soran folk song was born. Men sang in the spirit of camaraderie, and the dance was choreographed to represent the waves pulling in the heavy nets and the joy of a big catch. Please enjoy the Yosakai Soran dance by students from Brookline High School and junior ambassadors from Takikawa City, Hokkaido. 続いては滝川高校とブロックライン高校の生徒さんたちがこの祭りのためによさこい踊りを踊ってくれました北海道の日本海側の漁港小樽市や益城町はかつてニシン漁で栄えました波に乗って押し寄せてくるニシンの群れで海は銀色に輝いたと言われていますニシン漁は冬の寒さの中で行われましたいっぱいになった重い網を男衆が船から全力で手繰り寄せて陸に上げる作業は過酷な作業でしたその男衆の掛け声大量の喜びの歌に合わせて踊るのがこのよさこいソーラングシです沖を眺め海に乗ってくるニシンいっぱいになった網を引く動きなどが踊り,踊りに表現されていますブルックライン高校の学生さんと滝川市のジュニアアンバサダーたちの踊りをご覧くださいみなさん、こんにちは。ボストン日本祭りの開催おめでとうございます。私たちはブルックライン高校で日本語を勉強しています。ボストンと北海道の交流30周年を記念して。北海道で生まれたよさこいソーラン武士のダンスを練習しました。どうぞご覧ください。
ウルクライン高校の皆さんお疲れ様でした北海道滝川市国際交流院のラブ・ライアンでございますコロナ災いの中でもご自宅などで頑張って北海道の予測を踊っていただきましてありがとうございますこれからも北海道とマサチューセッツ州との友情を深めるようにお互いに頑張りましょう。When you have a chance, please visit Japan. And Japan Airlines is the airline of choice when flying direct from Boston to that country. This year, JAL are providing some tickets for the silent auction. Join me as we watch a fully handmade video by the JAL airport staff. It was produced, shot, edited all at Boston's Logan Airport. The video is fun for the kiddies, but it's also fun for the adults, especially if you're into airplanes. If you want to see the most important thing, please visit the most important thing. So, the most important thing is to see the most important thing. The most important thing is to see the most important thing. The most important thing is to see the most important thing. The most important thing is to see the most important thing. 企画、撮影、編集のすべてを行ったメイドインボストン。完全ハンドメイドの動画をお送りいたします。お子様向けですが、大人も楽しめる内容です。特に飛行機ファンは見逃せませんよ。特別に普段見ることができない飛行機についての動画を、ぜひご家族皆さんでお楽しみください。I'm KK, Japan Airlines Boston Station. Thank you for joining us today. The Japan Festival Boston team told us that this year's keyword is bring us together. We are very happy to be here to bring you the aviation class for children, but also grown up can enjoy. First of all, do you know what my job is with Japan Airlines? Japan Airlines flies from Boston to Tokyo, Japan, non stop. We also connected to many countries in Asia via Tokyo. Japan Airlines, many people work together as a team in our respective workplace, aiming to make the best button pass and offer the finest service and a safe and comfortable flight for all customers. Sales. Airport staff, maintenance engineers, cabin attendants, flight crew, 
only when every staff performs each duty thoroughly and makes the best button pass to colleague in the next section. Can we provide the finest service? Where do we pass the button? We would like to show you today. I'm an aircraft maintenance engineer. My job is taking care of the airplane. It's like being a reliable doctor for airplanes who assure the safety and quality. So today, I will take you to the aircraft maintenance engineer world at Boston Logan International Airport. Thank you for bringing us together. Are you ready? Let's get started.
こんにちはよろしくお願いしますお願いしますよろしくお願いします。はい、じゃあ Cockpit ground. Both engines ready for start. Roger. We start both engines. Your engine start. How was everything? Did you get ideas about the aircraft maintenance engineer world? I hope you enjoyed our job. We do our best daily to make your flight experience comfortable to Japan and around the world. We will be there for you. We hope to see you again at the airport. Thank you for bringing us together today. Bye bye. Face of unexpected changes, science never stops advancing. Science makes the world stronger and more grateful. Building partnership in science. Fujifilm Wako. 帰国か
何から始めるかなまずは黒猫ヤマトにお問い合わせください全米各地の直営店から日本のご自宅まで一回輸送任せて安心黒猫ヤマトの海外引っ越し When you say Matsuri or festival, this of course means Japanese food. YouTuber Deanna Troy will give us an overview of the types of foods you'll find at a Matsuri. Also, we, we'll hear from Japanese bento specialist Deborah Samuels. She'll show you how you can incorporate Japanese food into your everyday life. Our food team has put together a fun little onigiri challenge for you. Please give it a try and remember to tag us on social media. Remember, check out our silent auction and also sign up for our free prizes. 祭りといえば何と言っても食ですよね。ユーチューバーのディアナトロイさんが日本祭りの日本食をたくさん紹介してくださいます。そしてボストン周辺で日本のお弁当のスペシャリストと知られるデボラサミュエルズさんに日常の中に取り入れられる日本食をご紹介いただきます。このジャパンフェスティバルボストンのフードチームが作成した楽しいおにぎりチャレンジも開催します。皆さんも SNS でタグ付けしておにぎりチャレンジにご参加くださいそして下記リンクからサイレントオークションと抽選会へのご参加もお忘れなく Hi! My name is Deanna Troy Travels I make content all about Southeast Asia and Asia travel destinations Today I'm here to tell you all about the Japan Festival Boston I went last year and filmed and had such a great time This year, they are hosting an online virtual event that is totally free. Experience such amazing activities that involve Japanese culture and get to see some featured films and featured creators like myself. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you have a wonderful time this year and next year when it's in person. Bye! Matsuri's or Japanese festivals are well known for their parades and dashi musical float performances. But the real stars of the show are the delicious festival foods. Keep watching for four munchable festival treats to enjoy in Japan. At Matsuri's, multiple Yai Tai food stalls line the streets in the day and in the night. For only 500 yen or just under $5 USD, Get a plate of yakisoba or fried noodles. It consists of noodles, carrots, and cabbage. The Chinese wheat noodles used in this dish make it taste similar to Chinese lo mein. Or grab a hashimaki for a more portable snack. This flaky sensation is a variant of the popular dish, okonomiyaki. The only difference is it's served on chopsticks for eating on the go. Another savory stick item is a yakitori, or Japanese skewer. These skewers can be found at festivals or at most street food areas in Japan. They come with either meat or vegetables or both. A perfect snack for vegan and carnivore travelers alike. But if you're in the mood for a sweet snack, then you must taste the choco banana, which are both yummy and somewhat healthy. Which of these four festival foods made your mouth water? Let me know in the comments below. Hungry for more? Check out these two other Japanese food videos in my Fabulous Foods playlist. Linked on screen now and in the description of this video. On this channel, Deanna Troy Travels. Happy traveling! But wait, before you go. So that was our time at the Hachioji Festival. We are ending our day with some delicious festival food. If you want to see more videos from Tokyo, like this video and subscribe to
Indiana Troy Travels for more travel videos every week. Bye! Hi, I'm Deb Samuels. Welcome to my kitchen in Lexington, Massachusetts. I've been involved in Japan some way or other since 1972, when I first went as a young college student on a study abroad program. And since then, over the decades, I've lived in Japan for a total of 12 years. My main area of interest is Japanese culture and cuisine, and my passion is the bento box. Both the box itself and the contents and what goes into it. I believe it kind of says it all about Japanese culinary aesthetics. The way something looks, the way something tastes, the way it's presented to the receiver is of utmost importance, whether the person is five or whether the person is 50. I have a collection of about 60 boxes and I've been using every single one of them. And I hope you'll enjoy our bento class today. So what I'm going to do is be making tamagoyaki, which is the rolled omelet. I'm going to be making uh, tsukune, which is a ground chicken with a little bit of uh, teriyaki sauce on it. And I'm going to be cooking broccoli all at the same time. Something really helpful for very busy parents in the morning. So let's get started. My pan is heated. And I'm going to add the skune in this portion of the pot. My tamagoyaki is an egg, a little soy sauce, and I'm going to add a bit of sugar. And a little bit of water. And that is going to go into the middle section. It's been well oiled, and in it goes, all in one swoop. And I will distribute the egg. And now, my broccoli, which is my green, and I'm gonna cook that in the third section and add a little bit of water. It really helps when I have several other elements. One which is going to be tuna filled onigiri. And then I had some leftover pumpkin that I made last night. I'm gonna make a delicious uh, pumpkin chakin or little bit of a uh, pouch, a pumpkin pouch. Let's turn over the tsukune. Oh yes. Browning very nicely. As you can see, move around my broccoli, and as you can see, that's getting a nice bright green. I think I'll add a little bit more water for that. Okay. While I'm waiting for everything to set, I think I will add the pumpkin to a plastic wrap lined cup. And I'll be making it into a pumpkin shape. All right. Let's see about that egg now. Here we go. And I'll begin to roll it. Nice. Okay. Back and roll it over. My egg is done. I'm going to set it on plate and keep on moving. Okay. When you put things together in a bento, you can't put anything in hot. Um, it's not good for the bacterial environment, so you need to wait till everything is uh, cooled down. Now I'm just picking up the edges of my plastic wrap and twist, twist.
And this has pumpkin. It's a pretty squash, actually. With a little bit of butter, a little bit of soy sauce, and salt. And here it is. What a pretty shape. And I'm gonna get ready to put that in once I've got all my elements done. And let's see how the broccoli's doing. All right, very good. And I just wanted to get it nice and green so that it wouldn't be uh, raw, but I want to maintain the green color. So I'm now finished with that. And I'll take my broccoli out. So I have three elements of bento. One of the most important things when you're making a bento is to have five colors or lots of colors. Uh, in Japan, they like to use red, black, white, yellow, and green. And when you have five colors in your bento box, you're on your way to a nutritious meal. Okay, let's see how the screen is doing. Very well. And then it just needs a shellacking of teriyaki sauce, which I made a few days ago and had it in the refrigerator. There we go. And just let that set. Let me see. Oh yes, the interior feels like it's cooked. And so I'm just going to turn it over, turn it over, and turn this off. So I now have four elements of my bento done right here. And I'm going to take the pot right off. Let's make onigiri. I'm going to take the rice out of my rice cooker. I'm going to put this rice in a cup again, lined with some plastic wrap. Teacup is a perfect size, it's about half a cup. And then I'm going to take a spoon and just tamp it down a little bit. Make an indentation and take some tuna mayo that I also grated some carrots into for a nice colorful and a little bit of a nutritious uh, crunch. All right, a little bit more rice on the top, like this. And I'm ready to Make this into an onigiri and try to keep my hands clean. So I've got it right here out of the pouch and I'm going to just twist the wrap and then shape the onigiri with a really nice warm rice. I will take a piece of Naughty and rough side onto the rice and shiny side out. And my second piece of onigiri. Time to put it all together. Let's go. And as you can see, I have a little bit of foil here so the egg does not touch. I'm going to just lift up the foil and put my two tamagoyaki next to my onigiri. One of the most important things in making bento is I appeal, made a taberu, you eat with your eyes. I'm going to put a little green down here because the scrune is a little brown and so that will be a nice color underneath it and I will Put them together like this okay. and show that pretty bamboo skewer. My kabocha chakin, and I think I'll take a little spinach and put it on the top so it really does look like a pumpkin. I'm getting there, and now some grapes for my Next. dessert here. A little bit of green for vegetables. 
you want to tuck and fill in all the corners because this needs to not shake around. As you can see, everything is very tightly backed, packed. And I also have some cheese left over. I'm going to make some cheese flowers and add that for a little eye appeal, Mayday Taberu. Here's my bento lunch, one of my favorite boxes. The cover is a pattern of a kimono. And when we come back, I will show you how to close it all up. Let's finish up the bento. I'm gonna put a little bit of hot red pepper on top of the skune, a few sesame seeds on the broccoli, and some picks that'll help us to kick them up. And now we'll put together the box and I will show you how to wrap it in this beautiful furoshiki. So the box is a little packed and we're going to be putting on the lids and pressing down. And then we put the second layer on top like this. And again, press down the lid and the top. And to hold everything together, we have a beautiful red band. That holds the lunch all in place. And now it's just time to wrap it up and put it in our fudoshki. And this will hold the whole meal together as I carry it in my bag to work. And here's my bento lunch. Itadakimasu! Now you learned how to make onigiri. Let's share a picture or a movie of your onigiri and get a prize. Please post your onigiri picture or movie on your Facebook or Instagram with a hashtag Onigiri Challenge Boston Japan Festival.
Deborah Samuels. She is the lead curriculum and content developer for Table for Two USA's Japanese Inspired Food Education Program. Wa Shokuiku Learn, Cook, Eat Japanese. From 2000 to 2017, she was a correspondent for the food selection of the Boston Globe and has authored two cookbooks My Japanese Table and The Korean Table, both from Tuttle Publishing. Samuel has also curated Obento and Built Space, Japanese boxed lunch and architecture. An exhibit at the Boston Architectural College, 2015, and co curated Objects of Use and Beauty, Design and Craft in Japanese Culinary Tools, at the Fuller Craft Museum, 2018. Earlier in her career, Deborah worked as a program coordinator and an exhibit developer at the Children's Museum Boston. She has lived in Japan for 12 years and her hands on workshops in the United States and abroad on Obento, the Japanese lunchbox, and other Japanese cuisine have been widely acclaimed. She has also taught American cuisine in Germany and in Japan for the U.S. Embassy. Music is, of course, another part of a matsuri. This year we have a collaboration from community chorus groups as well as a fun appearance from Jiken Dojo or Experimental Dojo.
ここか。何から始めるかな。まずは黒猫ヤマトにお問い合わせください。全米各地の直営店から日本のご自宅まで一貫輸送。任せて安心。黒猫ヤマトの海外引っ越し。This year we have a special guest. Everyone's favorite, Kumamon. Kumamon is a favorite mascot in Kumamoto. We'll show you where he's from. And you'll also get to see the picnic adventure we had with him. Nanto, Kotosha wa Tokubet guest to stay, Minna Daiski Kumamon got to Kremasta. Kumamon wa Kumamoto Ken Shushin. Konkai wa Minna de Picnic Kue de Kaketa Yosa o Tokishimas.
Here, come on, Mom. Try this. Come on, you've got to try this too! Let's find a nice place to yeah. sit. How about right there? Let's sing a song!
Bye. 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 See you later. What a cool guy. Sun. Must have been the wind. No, no, no. I'm here. Grandfather? Yes, my grandson. This world is in pain. Only you can save it. But how? You must create the new beginning. I don't know what you mean. The seeds to create a new beginning. The agent to revitalize this barren world. Grandfather. Grandfather. No, no, no. Wait.
Yes, my grandson. Visit the bonsai master. You must be the bonsai master. Can you help me, please? I need to learn how to speak to the plants. Help Can't you see? I'm plants. busy. Sensei, for the honor of my family, for my grandfather. Oh, uh, okay. I'll show you. Thank you. Listen to them. These are living beings. These will teach you everything you need to know. Trust the strength. These trees have been here for centuries. Everything you need to learn in life is in this tree. 
Don't be afraid. Just do it. I've taught you everything you need to know. The legendary Maramo is the key to salvation. This is a gift from me. You will need it. <laughs> you have no chance of getting golden seed. Who are you? You don't need to know. All you need to know is you have no chance to survive. Only you can do it. Only you can do it. Only you can do it.
Welcome now to our cosplay contest. We have contestants competing specifically for Japan Festival Boston. You can vote in the link in the description and the winner will get a prize. We'll announce the winners later on social media. After the cosplay contest, we'll see performances by our special musical guest. We have Didi and then Yuzu Natsumi, who will share their original music. And then Toshi Nakazawa will give us a dynamic dance performance. After that, we'll hear Queen's Tears Honey, an a cappella group from Japan. And then finally, we'll see a fantastic dance performance by the students of Showa University in Boston. Remember to check out our silent auction and sign up for our free prize. この祭りのためにポストン近辺のコスプレ好きの皆さんが参戦してくださいました。ご覧の皆様は誰のコスプレが一番か下のリンクからぜひ投票してください。流行る優勝者の発表は後日SNSで行い素敵な商品を贈
I astonished, absolutely astonished. <laughs> Making a, a harness just fit. It's really hard to make it fit to your body so that it doesn't make any wrinkles. So awesome job on that. Like Thank great you. work. Um, would you say Okoye is your favorite character from Black Panther? Is that why you wanted to cosplay her? Yeah, I think she, uh, she's a good role model. She is beautiful and strong. Um, and I just want to be that too. And I, I want to say I can relate to her. So I really want to cosplay her. And I even shaved my head. This is not a bald cap. So <laughs> I don't know how to do one, but um, I think it's really empowering. And it's a, mm, for a black woman, it's like a, it's, it's a culture thing, you know? I can't really... <laughs> Trust me, I understand. <laughs> um, but on another hand too, just shaving your head is very empowering because um, a lot of females don't have, or, or just people in general, not only females, um, have trouble finding confidence without hair. Um, it may seem like something small, but even with me, I struggle with like feeling beautiful um, every time I cut my hair. And it's really inspiring to see that. Thank you. <laughs> of course. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I will see you with the rest of the contestants. Um, but until then, good luck. Thank forever. you. We'll come you forever. <laughs>
and they can pick anyone. Oh, can be any outfits and costume they want to wear, make mm-hmm. them happy. Exactly. As long as you're happy, then your cosplay is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, speaking of cosplaying, what do you look for when you're choosing a character to cosplay? Usually, I don't think too much about uh, choosing the character. I watch the show until the end, and I know which character I want to cosplay them. Like love for the mm. first time, you know. <laughs> of course, and so. I, I just I just have to see your cos. It's so cute. Can I please see a turnaround? Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> This is look how I do. It's so cute. I can't get over it. <laughs> well, I hope um, I'm I'm gonna see you later with the rest of the contestants. I'm going to wish you good luck, and I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye, matane. Matane. <laughs> Next up, we have the former leader of the Cherryton Gardening Club, Haru-chan. Here to show you what's happened is Adrian. Hello. Adorable. Absolutely adorable. So, what made you want to cosplay Haru? So, I wanted to cosplay Haru because I love Lego s h i Um, but also because Haru is a very strong and independent character by herself, and I really admire that about her. Hmm. Um, so Haru is, I'm guessing by the ears, a bunny, right? She is a dwarf rabbit. Yeah. So what helped you create a look since your character is a rabbit <laughs> or a bunny? So. I was really inspired by a lot of other makeup looks where people use blushing to accentuate the looks of a rabbit instead of going for a more outward animalistic look. It was more cute. Okay. And what would you say is the hardest part um, about um, cosplaying a humanoid animal type character? And how do you go about deciding which parts you want to keep animalistic and which parts you want to keep human? Sure. I would say the hardest part for me personally would be finding that perfect line between animalistic and adorable, because I always want to stay towards the more cute side of things instead of going towards more prosthetic-based and outwardly super animalistic. Um, I really do like going for the more uh, adorable look, but <laughs> that's pretty much my my only thing. Well, thank you so much for joining us again. Um, I'll see you again when we when you join the rest of the contestants. Um, until then, good luck. Thank you. <laughs> of course. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> Next up is the head of the Phantom Hive Noble Family, aka the Queen's Watchdog, Seal Phantom Hive, wearing a beautiful dress? Question mark. Here is cute for cosplay. Konnichiwa. Absolutely phenomenal. You look amazing. And I, I did think that a lot because there's a lot of good cosplays, but that is that is very immaculate. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you. Tell me, that is a very detailed, hard cosplay to tackle. Do you have any tips for new or older cosplayers looking to tackle making a um, cosplay dress? Uh, I do have a few. Um, in order to get a beautiful ball gown such as this. Uh, you're gonna want plenty of fabric, especially wide fabric. The wider, the better, because then you won't have to worry about as many seams. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot of fabric, a, a lot, very much a lot. And you're gonna want to make sure it's hemmed, and also that you have uh, the proper hoop skirt and petticoat to go underneath as well to give it the extra poof. I wish I could sew. <laughs> you make me wish I can sew. <laughs> so. 
being as you made this from the ground up, do you think you have a better understanding of how um, dresses were made in the Victorian to Edwardian periods? Um, I think so. It's a little bit better, but it's not as what it actually would have been. Um, the ladies would actually be sewn into their outfits and then oh. they'd have to like, get them ripped off when they're time to get out of it. So. Well, thankfully you don't have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I will see you again when we collectively have the rest of the contestants go together. And until then, I wish you good luck. Thank you. Again, just wonderful cosplay. <laughs> Thank you. I have a hand. <laughs> and last, but not least, here is Sarah, showcasing off the owner of the 7th Heaven Bar, who is also a member of the eco-terrorist group Avalanche, Tifa Lockhart. Sarah, the amount of details on your cosplay is insane. Absolutely baffling. Like the skirt, there seems to be like, well, like, I can't even see five, five, oh gosh, there's way more than five straps on you. <laughs> did you use a pattern for that or did you wing it? Well, for the skirt, I, I just winked. Um, I took a collection of reference photos from the game and some other people's creation of it and sort of constructed my own idea of what it would look like. And yes, there are quite a few belts, uh, 28 to be exact. 28 belts. Oh my gosh. What, and, and, that I believe that's a gauntlet I see on your left arm. Um, how do you how did you make that? How do you go about choosing materials for that? So for this, uh, so for my reference photos, I kind of included that uh, the game it would be made of sort of a metallic material. So um, I definitely wanted to go for what was most accurate. So I used EVA foam and heat molded that to get this shape and then plastic it, paint and uh, give it that sort of sheen that metal would have. So uh, really I was just going for what was most accurate to my uh, record photos. Well, it looks amazing. Awesome job on the gauntlet. Um, well, seeing as there's metal and DVO foam, and I'm guessing your dress, your skirt is made of leather, seeing as there's more than one way to make cosplay, how do you go about deciding how you're going to make a certain part, or um, where do you start? So I start with deciding on materials based on what I think it would physically. For example, again, the skirt is made of a metal feel, so I use shiny material, uh, uh, plastic just to give it that sort of um, texture. Um, with the feather as well, I use different, uh, two different types of feather, one with texture and one that's very uh, sort of flat in texture to give it uh, sort of dimension. So I really do, uh, pay close attention to the materials. If not, the, the most important thing to me is the materials. Um, so yeah, and I guess uh, I sort of just took my time with detailing and all that. And I really wanted to be as accurate as possible. Well, you certainly hit the nail on the accuracy there. You, that's the amount of work and detail that you add to your cosplays really is appreciated here. Like, it's, we can really see it. <laughs> Um, well, Sarah, that's around all the questions I have for you, or, I, or else I would keep you here all day. But I'll see you um, later on with the rest of the contestants for the last look. And until then, I wish you good luck. Please look for me. Bye. <laughs> Bye. And there you have it. Let's have one more look at our wonderful contestants. Below, you can find the link where you can submit your vote for your favorite cosplay. The deadline to vote is Monday night, and the winner of the contest will be announced on Tuesday on our website, japanfestivalboston.org slash cosplay, and on our various social media. Before we go, I'd like to once again thank Tatiana for photography and make 
Boston, and of course, ABC a Japanese market for sponsoring this virtual event and allowing us to spread our love of cosplay with you all. <laughs> we hope to see you next year at Japan Festival Boston 2021. So stay safe, sit tight, and get ready for our next program. Jane! Jane! Bye bye! 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 Nice to meet you. My name is Lily. I'm a Japanese singer songwriter. Eh, この度はこういった素敵なイベントに参加させていただき、誠にありがとうございます。えっとですね、えー、私は今回ボストン初めてなので、あまりよくわからないことたくさんあるんですけれども、えー、少しでもですね、日本とボストンが仲良くなれるそんな架け橋のような、えー、少しでも、ね、なれたら。嬉しいです。今回はありがとうございます。
聴いていただきました、えー、私リリで「花」という曲でしたこの曲は、えー、和をテーマにした曲となっておりました皆さんいかがでしたでしょうか聴いていただきありがとうございますリリでしたはい I'm Yuzu, singer songwriter from Japan, playing Japanese traditional instrument, shamisen. I'm introducing Japanese music to the world, and I have been to America for five times. Of course, I visited Boston two years ago. So, my next dream is performing at Japan Festival Boston. I'm looking forward to seeing you in Boston, hopefully, next year. Well, today, Let me show you my original music video. This is a kind of J pop song with Japanese traditional flavor using this instrument, Shamisen. Use the original song, Sakura Rain. <laughs>
ライフイズアンエクスペリメント I'm ドクター純子ドクターたけちゃん We are チキンダッジャー<笑>ビア実験道場、Do you know? ジャパニーズアニメ、鬼滅の刃。鬼滅の刃鬼滅の刃、炭治郎。あ、I'm、炭治郎。いや、炭治郎。あ、I'm、ネッコ。ああ、レッツプリティ。レッツプリティ。いや、レッツプリティ。そう、This is Japanese、新宿、uh-huh? トラディショナル。よかったら来てあのボストン楽しんでください引き続きボストン祭りをお楽しみくださいでアンデイウィラボストンチュチュチュチュチュじゃあ準備しといてよ。ラッツバットだよ。なんでこれ絡まってんだよ。これで何分かかってんだよ。ああ。すいませんね。ごめん、せいせい。せいせいじゃないよ。<笑>
Charlie. I am a Charlie. Oh my god. Yeah, I told you. Yeah, Todo Keta no. Karamari Hodoku, Japanese song. Hi, my name is Toshihiko Nakazawa. Just call me Toshi. And I'm so happy to be here again and again and again and again from 2016. Please enjoy my history. Bye. Hi, みなさんこんにちは中澤俊彦です。この度は九周年ボストン日本祭りおめでとうございます。僕も2016年から今年で5年連続出場させてもらってます。今日はその歴史を少しご覧いただければと思っておりますのでどうぞお楽しみくださいそれではさあ、あゆまりんぼのエクスパフォーマンスイエーイ今年もまたまたニューヨークを拠点として活躍されていますダンサーの中澤俊彦さんの登場です2013年、14年と2年続けてニューヨークのアポロシアターアマチュアナイトでも優勝されたという超人ダンサーのトシさんの登場ですそれです。プロフォーマー、トシナガザワ。You may have seen him on the television. So you think you can dance? Gentlemen, phenomenal dancer. He has performed at the Apollo one amateur night there a couple of times. For this, we're just going to have dancing and a little bit of background music. So no need for the microphone. This is all about dance. Okay, それではお楽しみください。トシナガザワです。What? What? All right. Hello, what's up? Yeah, all right, I'll call you later. I'm dancing the world famous Japan Festival Boston right now. Wh what? What? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Oh.
皆さん、こんにちは。私はジャック・ペニーと申します。ワンボーバン・ディクツン・ボーソン・オフィスで知的財産担当の弁護士をしています。私たちはイノベーションの道をリードしているアメリカ、そして世界中の日本企業と交流できることを誇りに思っています。私たちが皆さんにどのようにお手伝いできるかお知らせください。Those were fun performances. Next, we'll hear a message from the Consul General of Boston, Mr. Setsuo Omori. After we hear from him, we'll take a look at some of the Japanese culture you can find in New England. We'll visit the Japan House located in the Boston Children's Museum. This is a whole house transported from Kyoto, the sister city of Boston. After that, we'll hear from our annual favorite Japanese candy maker, Candy Five. ボストン総領事館からのお言葉をご紹介しますそしてニューイングランド地方の日本文化をピックアップしてみようと思います姉妹都市である京都市から送られたボストン子ども博物館の「今日の町屋」そして毎年このフェスティバルにご参加いただいているキャンディーファイブさんの飴細工の作成風景を見てみましょう I would like to say congratulations. On the opening of this year's Japan Festival of Boston. Japan Festival of Boston started in 2012, having merely several thousand visitors. Now that the festival has attracted several tens of thousands, this makes the biggest Japan related event in New England. This year, due to the COVID 19, the in person events were forcibly cancelled. Nevertheless, thanks to huge efforts, Onerous groundworks, and above all, all the greatest passion among the festival staff and volunteers, the event was made possible in virtual format. One of the main themes of this year's festival is the 30th anniversary of the Massachusetts Hokkaido sister state relationship. The relationship started in the early days of Japan's state opening period called the Meiji Ishin. When a number of American technocrats were invited from Massachusetts and all over the United States for teaching Japanese youngsters. The most well known figure among them is Dr. William Smith Clark from Ashfield, Massachusetts. 150 years ago, he taught agriculture to the students in Hokkaido, and his words, Boys Be Ambitious, is still very widely remembered among Japanese people. Dr. Clark's spirit is still alive among municipalities and people of Hokkaido and Massachusetts. Namely, towns of Concord and Nanae in Hokkaido, and towns of Springfield and Takikawa of Hokkaido, have maintained sistership relations, and cultural exchanges are still inherited from people to people as well. As. Next year, Japan Festival of Boston celebrates its 10th anniversary. While the prospect of the COVID 19 is unclear, I believe, as far as the spirit of friendship that started 150 years ago, which is alive, the festival will survive in spite of the calamities we are going through. Let me conclude my brief remarks by reiterating the unchanged commitment of the Consulate General of Japan for the festival, whatever the format will be, wishing everlasting friendship. Between Japan and Boston and Japan and the United States. Thank you. Konnichiwa, Boston Children's Museum no Akimi des. Kyowa, Kono video de Tokan Niaru, Tenji Jo, Kyo no Machia. The Japanese House Exhibit をご紹介させていただきます。では、奥にどうぞ。この京のマジアはもともと1800年代の終わりに建てられた町屋で、京都西陣織の商人、そして職人をされていたご家族が、代々住まわれていましたなぜこの京の町屋がボストンにあるかというと京都とボストンは姉妹都市で1979年その
姉妹都市友好関係20周年記念の時に京都市からお祝いでボストン市に送られたのがこの京の町屋です。それを、えー、京都の安井木工の宮大工さんが解体しそしてこちらに運ばれた後当館の3階に立て直してくださいましたで京都でも少なくなっているような京の町屋ですのでこのボストンにある京の町屋当館としてはボストンの大切な宝物だと思っておりますこうしどをあげて。ご玄関に入るとすぐに店の間があります。町屋の特徴、住居空間と職業空間が一緒に入っているのが特徴です。その店の間、えー、もともと絹商人、職人のご家族の町屋ですので、まずすぐに立派なオリアダンスが目に入りますそして一時期はこちらに旗織り機がもあったということです店の間から襖を開けると中の間に続きますこちらにはこたつが置いてあります。まだ寒くないのでこたつ布団は出しておりません。そして、だるまさんの上には神棚があり、奥を見るとお稲荷さんが見えてきます。そこから次は八丈間の奥の間座敷に入りますこちらには仏壇、床の間、そしてその先にお庭がありますこの京の町屋は当館のビルの中に入っているので庭の部分はなかなか外と感じてもらえないとは思いますが、えー、と作りとしてはこのお部屋にいると、えー、光や空気を感じ季節の移り変わりも楽しめるような作りになっておりますそしてそのお隣には台所台所があります1970年代の作りになってますですがよく見ていただくとたくさん、えー、昔のものが目に入ります例えばこの滑車この下には以前井戸があったというその名残ですで立派な水やダンスがありその目の前をの上の方には超人箱もありますそして、こちら、特徴、高い天井、火袋があるのも楽しんでいただけます。そこを通り過ぎると、やはり1970年代のお手洗い、おトイレがあり、そして、洗面所。脱衣所を抜けると1970年代のお風呂場があります。で、廊下に戻って今度は庭側の縁側、廊下を抜けると通るとまた奥の間座敷に戻りましたはい今日は簡単ですが当館にある
京の町屋の1階の部分をご,あのご紹介しました最後まで見ていただきありがとうございました Do you remember me? I'm Candy Maker Candy Fight. I miss you so much. <laughs> I cannot go to this year Boston Japan Festival, but this is a good idea I made to you with video, virtual video tape. <laughs> It's so good. The corona is so hard a time because our entertainment, no job, no event, no party. They don't need a candy maker. It's so sad thing. But I was very enjoy now because we have enough time, nice creation. It's good time. And I met to my Japanese friend. Nurse friend, I respect doctor and nurse. They had a so hard time. I will make a candy for them. And one day, I made 200 doctor and nurse mask emoji candy. I give to them. It's so nice. I was enjoy candy making. I met Nas Kyoko. She is working Mount Sinus Hospital. I made her candy like it. I met Nas Sachiko. She is working Bronx Hospital. I made 12 Nas candy like them. They send me beautiful photo and video. Please check it.
can't believe this it's amazing this has put such a smile on our faces this is excellent it can't be duplicated it's so much appreciated oh my goodness i love it love it love it love you candy five god's blessings on you my dear stay safe stay well and keep the good work up thank you again Japanese are good at making small and beautiful things. Ohinasama small doll is the first history of decorating small things. When I was a child, I liked a little toys with candy. It was starting my candy five world. Pastry chip made a big candy but i like the tiny candy art it's my fantasy like a disney world a candy made with my 10 finger can magically make anything in just three minutes please enjoy this 300 years japanese culture change this is my new world it's the old world it's the only candy maker but now I moved here this is a corona I moved here this is my new world I can do anything I am created I think my exciting thing not only candy I love music I love fashion I love jewelry, anything. One day, I think, oh, I can do it. I am most tiny custom jewelry around the world because I love tiny things, candy art things. This is a very small candy, but beautiful create. I can do that. I want to make jewelry world. And then I try to look at this. This is a small piece. This is earring or choker or this is my yeah here. Okay, look at this. Look, this is most tiny custom jewelry around the world. Look at this very very tiny size. You send me a picture, I can do custom one. It's so nice. Yarding or ring, I can do it.
ありがとう。See you next year. I hope so. Next year, I try to make you candy or create my jewelry. I don't know. I think both <laughs> have two kind of entertainment. I can do now. I miss you so much. Thank you. See you again next year. Bye bye. You can do create yourself. You just do you. Of unexpected changes, science never stops advancing. Science makes the world stronger and more grateful. Building partnership in science. Fuji Film Wako. The Boston Kimono Festival Organization is a fundraising event group featuring kimonos organized by Seiko Kitagawa, Nobuko Yoshihara, and Kayo Walsh. Their mission is to support children's health research through kimono related events in the Boston area. Currently, they're making a kimono themed calendar for charity release in 2022. The proceeds, they'll be donated to Massachusetts General Hospital Child Depression Program and the National Center for Child Health and Development in Japan. Furthermore, they're planning on having a kimono festival in November 2022. This event will include kimono fashion show. Japanese craft vendors, and other fun kimono related events such as a kimono photo booth and kids' craft area. They're looking forward to meeting you soon. Boston Kimono Fest 実行委員会は kimono を通してさまざまなチャリティー活動を行っているグループです。メンバーは北川聖子さん、吉原信子さん、ボルシカヨさんの3人。今取り組まれているプロジェクトはチャリティー kimono カレンダー2022です。ボストンで活躍する12人の日本人女性が着物姿で四季の景色に彩りを添えています商品の売上金は米国マサチューセッツ総合病院小児うつ病センターそして日本国立生育医療研究センター小児がん疫学の研究基金として寄付されます2年後には着物フェスティバルをボストンエリアで行う予定だそうですこれからもボストン着物フェスをどうぞよろしくお願いいたします。ボストンキモノフェスは、着物を通してボストンの皆様にいろいろなイベントを企画して楽しいことを考えているグループです。さて、今日はなんと。はい、振袖の着付けのプロセスを皆さんにお見せしたいと思っています。振袖はあのすごく着付けが、まあ、手が込んでいるんですけど、帯結びなどはとても見ていて、あの着付けを知らない方でもきっと楽しんでいただけるプログラムになると思うので、ぜひ楽しみにしておいてください。はい、では始まります。ああ、行ってみよう。<笑>では今日のモデルさんを紹介いたします。じゃーん、琴音ちゃんです。よろしくお願いします。よろしくお願いいたします。<笑>ちょっと恥ずかしいね。ちょっと照れちゃうね。着物を着るのは初めてですか？小さい時に着た。小さい時、じゃあ久しぶりだそうです。久しぶり以来ですね。ねじゃあ今日着もあの着る着物をお見せしたいと思います。今日の着物はなんと、うん、お母さんのね着ていたお着物です。お母様、うん
信子さんのデータを着物こちらですねあの,のし模様と言ってこれ実は昔の人がこうお祝いの時とかにあの贈り物としてアワビを乾かしてあスライスして乾かして細く長くしたものを束にまとめてでそれをお祝いとしてプレゼントしていたんですねそうなんだそうだからお祝い事っていう意味で実はこれアワビ柄なの<笑>全然わかんないと思うんですけど<笑>実はそう束ねのしっていうとっても縁起のいい模様ですでこれだけそうあの束ねてあるっていうことはいろんな人から祝福されてるよっていう意味だと思うのではい素晴らしい柄だと思いますはいではこれを着付け始めていきたいと思いますお願いしますでは行きましょう。はい、では私はこれから。はい、では。ここ切るんですね。そう、もうね、切るから。ちょっと帯も。はい。はい。では、切っていきましょう。はい、では、まずこれちゃん。これも、で、反対も。これが特,、えー、と特徴なんですけどあの華やかな振袖結びの時は特別な紐を使いますこれ中心がゴムになっていて3つに分かれます
ください。いいですね。そしてですね、今年はですね、着物、チャリティー着物カレンダープロジェクトを今、作成中です。あとは、2年後になりますかね、予定では。2年後には、チャリティー着物フェスティバル、着物フェスを今、企画して、計画しておりますので、皆さん、どうぞ私たちのウェブサイトをご覧になってください。これからもボーストの着物フェスをよろしくお願いいたします。応援よろしくお願いします。よし。Next up is Gagaku. This is a classical Japanese performance art form of imperial court music. They have an ensemble near the Boston area. Not only will we watch their performance, but we'll also learn about their farm. Please be sure to check out the silent auction. See the link below. みやびなパフォーマンスをぜひご覧くださいそして下記リンクからサイレントオークションと抽選会へのご参加もお忘れなく
Thank you. 
the face of unexpected changes, science never stops advancing. Science makes the world stronger and more grateful. Building partnership in science. Fuji Film Wacko. Our final performance will be by Mr. Tatsumi Manjiro. He is a living Japanese national treasure in the theatrical art of No. Please enjoy this very special treat. Festival no last of Kazarinova, Tokubitz Gesto, Ningen Kokoho no Tatsumi Manjiro san no No des. Dozo Kotan no Kudasai. Welcome to Japan Festival Boston. My name is Manjiro Tatsumi, a Japanese no actor. Minasan, Boston, Nihon Matsu, Yokosa. Watakshua, Shitekata Hosho, you no gakshi, Tatsumi Manjiro to Moshimas. Konkai, this ne, Nihon no dento tekina art, a gaze or geno gosho kai suru to yoko te, Watakshiga. 勤めております日本の脳という伝統芸がございます、えー、これはおよそですね、えー、今から1300年ぐらい前に、えー、から、えー、ずっと今に至るまで行われているものです、えー、一般的にはですね650年の歴史と言われていますがそれは世界的に有名な、えー、風刺家電書というものを書いたゼアミという、まあ、脳のスーパースターが、えー、いましたが、まあ、彼が今のようなスタイルに脳を作り上げていった、まあ、それをもってですね歴史が650年というふうに、えー、一般的には申しますが実は脳というものはですね、えー、今分かっているだけでもエビデンスとしては、えー、1250年ぐらい前から、えー、日本の奈良というところで、えー、始まっておりますひょっとしたらもっと昔かも分かりませんが。確かに分かっているのは記録があるのは、えー、奈良の興福寺あるいは春日大社という、えー、ところで、まあ、海外からもたくさんの方が訪れられますが、えー、そちらでですねいまだに今も続く毎年私もそこで主演をさせていただいておりますが、えー、そういった古い歴史を持つものです、えー、なぜこの脳というものがこんだけ長くですね続いてきたのかっていうことはいろいろな、うん、理由があると思いますが。一つにはですね、えー、自然、まあ、日本語で言うと「神羅万象」なんてことを言いますが自然というものとともに、えー、我々日本人は暮らしてきてるわけですがその芸術芸能もその自然とともに発達してきた、えー、その一つが脳なんですねですから、えー、人々の生活とともにあるいは、えー、理念観念まあ考え方といいますか精神性といいますかそういうものと一緒にですね、えー、長く続いてきたんではないかなと思います、えー、今回お届けしますのはですね、まあ、今回はまあバーチャルということで、えー、第1回バーチャルというお話でございますがまあ、えー、脳にはいろんな演目がございますが今日はですね「釈教石の橋」と書きますが釈教それを「連獅子」という演出連獅子は連なって獅子が出てくるつまりお役の獅子ですねえー、親の白獅子とこの赤獅子、えー、これが勇壮にですねたくましく、えー、ダイナミックに舞います、まあ、脳というのはイメージとして静かあまり動かない退屈眠くなるなんていうイメージを持つ方もいるんですが、えー、まあ脳はさまざまですそういった静かな演目もありますし激しいもの戦いのものあるいは神が出てきたり、えー、人間の恋愛ドラマであったり幽霊が出てきたりですねさまざまなものがあるんですが今回はですね、まあ、最もおめでたい時に演じるというようなことなんです、まあ、この、えー、ジャパンフェスティバルボストン日本祭りですね、えー、これをですね、まあ、このような大変な世の中ですけど、えー、これを祝して、まあ、我々の、うん、豊かな精神性というものはやっぱり芸術文化というものにですね
力を得なきゃいけないんじゃないかと思います。まあ、こういう時代だからこそ、そういうふうに世界の人々が思ってるんじゃないかと思いますので、えー、それを祝す、まあえー、ポジティブに考えていくということで、この釈教伝授師の、えー、映像をお届けしたいと思います。えー、音楽で、楽器で、さまざまな表現をしていきます。最初にすごく盛り上がって激しい音楽がありますがその後に静かになります石の端からポタッポタッと雫が落ちるがごとくそれを表現していますそして2匹の勇壮な獅子の前これをご覧いただきたいと思いますではどうぞ。
帰国か何から始めるかなまずは黒猫ヤマトにお問い合わせください全米各地の直営店から日本のご自宅まで一貫輸送任せて安心黒猫ヤマトの海外引っ越し Wow, that was a tremendous amount of content. Thank you all to the community members who collaborated to make this event a reality. Thank you for attending Japan Festival Boston Virtual 
We'll try to resume our in-person event as soon as possible. Meanwhile, please keep in touch through social media. Remember to check out our silent auction and also sign up for the free prizes. You'll see the link down below. And hurry, hurry, the contest will end shortly. We'll contact the winners within a week of this original broadcast. たくさんのコンテンツがありましたね。お楽しみいただけましたでしょうか。コンテンツにご協力いただいたコミュニティの皆さん、ありがとうございました。そして、ジャパンフェスティバルボストン2020をご視聴いただいた皆さんも、本当にありがとうございます。バーチャルでの開催もとっても楽しかったんですが、可能な限り会場での開催を再開したいと思っています。ぜひ私たちジャパンフェスティバルボストンの SNS をフォローして応援してください開催中のサイレントオークションと抽選会でご当選された方には1週間以内にご連絡を差し上げます締め切りまであと数時間となっておりますのでまだご,ご参加されていないそこのあなたぜひ下記リンクからご参加くださいいつもあんまり飲
through spring.